Question 12 to 17. <clears throat> so we have a diagram and, uh, you know, you can recognize it as being protein synthesis and, and um, exporting and uh, exocytosis and endocytosis and getting a little <clears throat> energy from the mitochondria. As you can see, adenosine uh, going to ADP and then making some ATP in the mitochondria. The mitochondria, of course, is known as the powerhouse of the cell. On the left, uh, there's the amino acids coming in, being the building blocks for protein. And uh, so you can see a protein being uh, made on the um, surface of the uh, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum is what we would assume that is because it's dotted with um, something and it looks rough. So, um, and those, th those things that it's dotted with are um, ribosomes. And so you could see a pre-pro-encephalin um, and it, which is a signal peptide is what they're telling us and uh, you can see that it's going it's being packaged inside of the rough endoplasmic reticulum we suspect it's being modified and so it's turning into pro-encephalin and then something else in kephalin and and you see it that as it's going through the rough endoplasmic reticulum <clears throat> some of it is uh, likely uh, well, it is going into the Golgi complex, which does not have the ribosomes, not studied with ribosomes, because where it is studied with ribosomes, that is the location of protein synthesis. That is, um, um, you know, where the body's doing synthesis of the proteins. There could be free ribosomes in, in the cell, which are not being shown here, but uh, they can be studying the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi complex, or also called the Golgi apparatus, it is known as the... Um, um, it is known as the export department of the cell. And so it, uh, it, you have these vesicles that are budding off of it. And um, with the enkephalins that have, that have gone through all the different stages of protein synthesis, and then we see it um, uh, with some ATP coming into a vesicle. And also we see this other um, part where tyrosine is, in, is, is entering the cell and there are some enzymes. Notice all those enzymes end in A's. So tyrosine hydroxylase. So it ends in A. So hydroxylase um, would be something that adds a hydroxyl group, which is OH. Then you have dopa that is produced as a result of that enzyme. Then <clears throat> dopa decarboxylase. Decarboxylase. So a, first of all, it's an enzyme. Second of all, it takes a dopa and it removes the carboxyl group decarboxylase so removing carboxyl group of course the carboxyl group is COOH so if you remove COOH you expect you're probably producing some COO um, which of course is carbon dioxide and then after that uh, you have dopamine uh, being produced and then you see dopamine entering into the uh, vesicle and uh, with dopamine beta hydroxylase again adding a uh, OH group one would expect to the beta position one would expect and um, uh, and then we have some combination of things happening and adrenaline being produced and then exocytosed and uh, and then we have some endocytosis as well so um, let's do some questions so first this cell is <laughs> the first question a, it cannot be prokaryotic because uh, pro prokaryotes are pre-nucleus, prokaryote. Karyote refers to uh, nuclear material and, um, and they have no membrane-bound organelles. And this, this is filled with membrane-bound organelles. And in fact, <clears throat> the mitochondria is about the size of a prokaryote. And the mitochondria is the only place outside of our nucleus that has DNA. And the DNA of mitochondria is circular. Well, what does, do prokaryotes have? They have circular DNA, um, but it lies naked in their, in, their, um, in their cells, not with a nuclear membrane. And so they're about the size of a mitochondria. They have circular DNA, and it is felt that through evolution, um, there was a period uh, in which uh, prokaryotes and, and eukaryotes had some mutualism that developed. And so um, this is a symbol of that. And so... Uh, prokaryotes out of the question um, is it undergoing mitosis or meiosis we don't have any evidence of that we have no information about that uh, you know we would want to see some uh, uh, chromatin material that has been uh, uh, condensed and we would like to see some uh, chromosomes something but anyway this cell is eukaryotic 
it's a true nucleus cell because uh, it has all these um, um, membrane-bound organelles. So next question, 13, which of the following is most likely? This cell is in, in what phase? Well, of course, you know, the cell cycle goes something like this, and uh, it's a circle. And um, uh, mitosis takes up about that much time in, in the cell cycle. Of course, everybody's excited to talk about mitosis with the phases, uh, you know, uh, it's really PMAT, <laughs> but anyway, PMATI is uh, the way people uh, like to remember it, which is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and of course, uh, this whole thing is interphase, um, and interphase has different parts uh, to it. It has one gap uh, here, it's got synthesis, it's got another gap uh, where it doesn't look like anything's happening, but during the gaps, lots of stuff is happening because proteins are being created and prepared for synthesis, and then proteins being created and prepared for um, uh, mitosis with the... Uh, and so it, there's a lot going on and sometimes cells take a little break, go into a G0 phase. Um, but uh, in general, cells uh, move uh, like this in, in the cell cycle. So you can clearly say, see the biggest part of the cell cycle is interphase. We have no um, evidence or in, information about uh, the cell um, uh, doing anything else at this time. So uh, this, it's very likely the cell is in interphase. Um, 14, uh, so that's answer A. 14, consider the following experiment. So cells are exposed to an antibody and they're inside the cell membrane on the inner surface. Okay, so um, on the specifically protein located uniquely on the inner surface of the chromaffin's vesicles membrane. So we, so we have a vesicle and uh, there's some sort of antibody that's bound on the inside. The antibody was labeled fluorescent dye. After exocytosis and then endocytosis, fluorescence would be greatest in... So basically, um, you can look at the diagram and you can see that the vesicles, um, the vesicles fuse with the membrane on the right side. Uh, you can see that, the, the exocytosis. And actually, this is called a kiss and run exocytosis because the membrane, it comes up to the uh, plasma membrane, it touches the plasma membrane, it fuses with it, and then it opens like this, releases its products, and then uh, later this membrane can be recycled like this and then pulled back into the cell. So you see that the inside of the vesicle remains inside um, once the vesicle uh, comes back to the inside of the uh, cell. So it, it, it sort of kiss and run, moves up, releases its products, comes back into the cell like that. So if there is label inside the vesicle, it was, it's going to remain inside um, of the vesicle. So the first uh, a, answer choice A says um, that it's um, inside the cell membrane, inside of the cell membrane, which is uh, not possible. Of course, the, the cell membrane is a bilipid layer uh, membrane, um, you know, with uh, phospholipids and, and so on. You would have to uh, you would have to be able to dissolve into the membrane, meaning you would have to have a fatty component to be able to get inside of uh, um, the cell membrane. Uh, B, inside of the Golgi complex. Well, the Golgi is the export department and it needs to recycle vesicles. Uh, and that's what, that's what they're showing us. They're showing you the exocytosis and vesicles going back to the Golgi apparatus being uh, recycled. So there's, um, um, this is part of the process. And so being inside of the Golgi complex would be uh, very uh, logical. Then... Uh, I'm still calling Golgi complex. I usually call it, call it Golgi apparatus, but whatever. And see, outside of the lysosome membrane, well, first, it won't be outside. Second, if it was inside the lysosome, the ly lysosome is filled with digestive enzymes, and that fluorescent dye would, would, uh, would die, <laughs> uh, literally. So um, outside of the mitochondrial membrane, and again, uh, no reason for that, and there's nothing in the diagram to, uh, to suggest that. So uh, that would... Uh, not be the case. So 14 is B, moving on to 15. Synthesis of pre, pro, and kephalin is achieved by, well, you know, this is the central dogma of, uh, of, of, of biology that, you know, uh, that uh, DNA is uh, 
DNA is transcribed. Um, you know, I'm not going to write it all out, but DNA is transcribed in a nucleus um, into messenger RNA. And then messenger RNA is translated on ribosomes uh, to produce uh, protein. And this is the central uh, dogma. And uh, this uh, means that proencephalin, which is clearly a, a protein, is, um, must be uh, translated on uh, ribosomes in order to produce the, pro and the protein. This is part of the, uh, the uh, process. So answer 15 is A. 16. According to the figure, the mitochondria, okay, obtains energy, obtains, stores energy. Okay, so basically, I mean, you have, uh, this is the worst drawing ever of a mitochondria, but uh, you have a chondria there, you have ADP on one side, and then you have ATP on the other. And what's really funny is that if one of the answer choices was uh, the mitochondria makes ATP, produces ATP, um, I think uh, almost, uh, well, I say 90% of students would have chosen that. But uh, stores energy in bonds of ATP is actually combining two ideas. One is that, yes, the mitochondria is um, making, producing ATP. It's shown by the diagram. And hopefully you already know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where you have oxidative uh, respiration, metabolic respiration. And, um, and so the most efficient creation of ATP in your body is taking place in mitochondria. So hopefully you already know that. But, uh, you know, the wording is, is good because it's, it's saying uh, specifically, it's not just making ATP, but is that ATP is the energy molecule. It is the short-term energy molecule in the body. You know, glucose is longer term, uh, lipids and, and, um, and so on, those are longer, or in glycogen, those are longer, longer term uh, molecules. But ATP is the short term energy molecule, and that energy is stored in the uh, phosphate bonds. So, um, so that is the correct answer. So 16 is C. And uh, 17. <clears throat> 17, which one of the following is a precursor of adrenaline? So we have to uh, take a look, close look at adrenaline there. Okay, so adrenaline, adrenaline is the, uh, we can see adrenaline, and uh, yeah, so adrenaline is that dark circle. Um, we can see uh, adrenaline being that dark circle, and uh, we know this because if you look at those diamonds that are the enkephalins on the left of the diagram, you can see those diamonds going into that um, vesicle. So we're going to ignore those diamonds and we can see the relationship now between um, adrenaline and, uh, and tyrosine. Because we can see that tyrosine, starting at the top, comes down, produces dopa by the action of the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase. Then dopa produces dopamine by the action of dopa decarboxylase. And then dopamine uh, produces noradrenaline because of dopamine beta hydroxylase. And then noradrenaline comes out and then comes back in as adrenaline. So we see that there's a direct line between tyrosine and adrenaline. And adrenaline will then be exocytosed. So then the answer is 17A. And that's all uh, based on the diagram. And usually, uh, you know, ACERS uh, pra practice questions don't usually have so many questions that are based on uh, some previous knowledge, but there was a combination here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, if, you, if you go to uh, chapter one in, in the Gold Standard book, there's a, there's a review of the uh, eukaryotic cell, mitosis, cell cycle. And uh, chapter two, it's uh, microbiology. And 2.2 has prokaryotes. And chapter three for uh, protein synthesis.